guess what? More AI. Uh, rumor on the street that uh, Huawei is introducing uh, another version of its Ascend AI accelerator to compete with NVIDIA. Dan, uh, what do you think here? What's 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 a happening? Hey, Pat, I, I think sometimes you say to me, I don't really like these speculation ones. And then sometimes you get done with them and you're like, I kind of like doing these speculation ones. So yeah, I do, man. You know, as a as a as an analyst, right? You you need to be very. I mean, there 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 are people who do great rumor mongering, and they get great page views. Yeah. Um, but we typically don't. But it is kind of fun to dive in. It's what our audience wants. You know, are you I mean, not entertained? Right. And 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 there is this theme, though, right? The whole world really. I mean, the big question, the macro question is, can anybody compete with Nvidia? Yeah, and so anything that's a sub theme to that, whether it's AMD making the acquisition today or Huawei de developing a next chip for China that's going to compete, and again, the note here is that it's competing with the H100. So the note is different because you know I, some people when I, I tweeted it, they immediately went down the path of it competing with the China spec chip. Yeah, and yeah. that's not the point here. The point is is that China has not been able to through its own means manufacture a competitive GPU to the H100, certainly not to the B series that's coming down the line. And that's been the question about China's ability to, to maintain competitiveness. Yeah. So I think the first point, Pat, you and I would probably agree and agree on violently is that of course China's trying to do this. <laughs> of course they are. Like what, why in the world would they not want to be able to take more uh, control of their situation right now the sanctions are adding complexity. It's limiting their ability to innovate, and it's forcing them to, you know, creatively or gray market a lot of hardware. Pat, what did we talk about? The cigarette cartons full of GPUs <laughs> coming across the border. Exactly. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean. To be honest, they're they're less cards now. They're more of these giant blocks. But you get the idea. Yeah. The, you know. Right. Historic. The, yeah. You're you're painting the historic picture. But I mean, look, the sanctions are are, are substantial. Um, I don't see the U.S. moving away from them anytime soon. They need to do this to maintain technological leadership. Not to mention just capacity right now. The, you know, there's so much limited capacity. Uh, they, they can ASML can only make so many machines with laser beams on them. Um, and there's only going to get there, big guy. Yeah, we're going to get there. I just wanted to talk about laser beams. Yeah. Um, but but realistically, design, packaging, building, implementation, and, and launching. So, you know, my take on the whole thing, Pat, is um, China is going to do everything in its power to get here. Um, they are going to do whatever it takes to design in copy capabilities, um, and they're going to try to manufacture competitive products. Um, can they do this as early as October per the rumor? I mean, that seems like a very aggressive timeline, but what we don't know is there's a bunch of don't know, like how long has this been in, in flight? Um, you know, any specific design uh, updates, partnerships, packaging relationships, like how are they putting this thing together? And then what capacity to manufacture do they have? Is it a handful? You know, we've seen them being able to, to take things down, I think as low as what, seven through SMIC, but the, the volume has been very low. The volume of, of, you know, so they're not able to do these things in high volume, which has been part of the limitation. So, you know, overall, Pat, I think they've been able to make a lot of progress in things like handsets and devices because of the, the differences in design. But I think with these large GPUs and systems, I just think it's it's very interesting and provocative, but I just don't see the horizon here. I, I think you're I think you're gonna be a year or two out, even if they can get it done. Um, and I think this does make for great rumor mill fodder, but I'm not as I'm not as sold that Huawei and its limitations are going to meaningfully be coming after the H one hundred, maybe even the A one hundred. Yeah, so let me just uh, get some stuff out there. Uh, the rumor was was around a 910C. Uh, Huawei's high silicon already offers uh, an Ascend 910B that uh, was going after the A100 uh, for for AI training and uh, and, uh, and inference. So that that's actually done a done deal, and companies like Baidu uh, in China are already. Uh, buying this. Th this is the potential follow-on. By the way, you know there's going to be a follow-on. Um, sure. Is it called C? Likely, right? So this rumor is, again, we we try to vet our rumors. This has a very 
um, high probability of, uh, of being true. Now, what's interesting when it comes to uh, wafer capabilities, you have Grok, like the, the silicon that Grok has right now is done on global foundries. 14. 14 nanometer. Right. Okay. By the way, Grok with a Q, not the Twitter thing with the K. Right. Yeah, that's a that, that that's exactly right. And well, wait a second. How can they do this? Well, first of all, you have to have to recognize that design is uh, for the Huawei Ascend is an ASIC, uh, which is you know like Grok, uh, like Maya, like Inferentia, <laughs> like the like the TPU. So um, likelihood is that it doesn't have to be on on bleeding edge. And then it, by the way, it's a lot less uh, of efficient as uh, on a process standpoint, but an ASIC is more efficient than than a GPU. And and the way that you do this, by the way, if, if let's say you're hitting a 200 performance, like, well, well, you know, how do you get, you know, to an H series uh, type of performance? Um, it, you have to string a lot of them together, right, through clustering. And it's done. I mean, how do you think that um, OpenAI was, you know, OpenAI ChatGPT 1.0 was trained? It wasn't done in an H. It was likely done on an A series or something before that. And what you do is just less efficient. It takes more servers. It takes more clusters uh, uh, to make this happen. Um, now, NVIDIA is not just going to let all that business disappear. Another rumor that, that we cover on our show that I would say is is very a high likelihood is this idea of a, a B20. Uh, H20 didn't actually see the light of day, but an A20 did in China, and that was the Chinese cut-down version of, of NVIDIA's silicon. Uh, I believe that uh, NVIDIA is likely going through the process. There is an actual process. Check out my website if you want to know what that is. But essentially, it's a red, yellow, green uh, status. And this would be in the yellow where NVIDIA has to ask permission of, of the government to, to say, to determine whether they can ship it in there or not. By the way, Pat, you mentioned something interesting about the, you know, these XPUs basically being put up head to head with these more flexible GPUs. And I think that is an important thing we can't dive into today because we don't have time. But understanding that a lot of these uh, accelerators are being built with more logic, you know, cores on them, like we're seeing with Gaudi right now, where you're hearing Intel making claims about Gaudi being able to compete meaningfully fully with the hopper. Um, architecture. I think this is similar to what I'm sure Huawei is doing. I haven't spent as much time in the Huawei portfolio. Hasn't been as relevant over the past few months. But to your point, they've been able to align something to the A series. Um, have you heard anything about scale on that? I'm just curious, like, uh, have they ever been able to hit any volume? Because that's one that I've heard the trap over there. They just haven't been able to get anything produced in volume, which seems like that would be a big limiter for for this you know i mean i i haven't i mean they're limited uh in the amount of seven nanometer smartphone chips they can uh they can right. break out but uh, i do not know about um i do not know about these asics we should put them in the lab run them side by side let's make it happen totally you hear that huawei let's uh let's get uh, let's get your infrastructure into our labs pronto